definition of compassion is sympathetic pity and concern for the sufferings and the misfor misfortune of others. In other words, showing mercy. Are we showing mercy and compassion for those outside of camp, even those within the camp? The word in Hebrew is rakhem, rakhem, which is the rash, the chet, and the mem, to show mercy. In Matthew chapter 5, 7, it says, blessed are those, blessed are the mercy, for they shall ob obtain mercy. And this is why it's very important that we are merciful and compassionate, because Yah was compassionate to us. Hallelujah. I'm going to give you a brief understanding of why Jonah was fleeing from, from, the, from, the, from the will of Yah when it came to the Ninevites. If you understand when it comes to the Ninevites, the Assyrians, these were people that was enemy of Yah. The Assyrians were a ruthless people. They were barbaric. They have no mercy on people. And Jonah was struggling, was, was, was struggling with the fact that he had to speak to these people. He was struggling with the fact that these people have done so many wicked things to other nations and to the Israelites. Let me give you a brief understanding of how wicked the Ninevites, the Assyrians were. You see, Nineveh, Nineveh, the name Nineveh means basically gift of God. These people were arrogant. They thought that they were the gift of God. Not our Elohim, not our Yahuwah, but they thought that they were a gift because of their ways, because of their, how they functioned throughout the world and, and how they went through different nations and conquered. Nineveh was actually known as a wicked city. Wicked city. They were known as a wicked city. You imagine being known as a wicked city? Nineveh was known as a wicked city. The Assyrians were very ruthless and cruel in attitude. Their reputation was cruel to those that they conquered. They were nasty. They plundered the wealth and the people of the city they conquered and dragged those of the captives with, the, with, with hooks in their nose. This is exactly what they did to the Israelites. They were so ruthless to the Israelites to the point that they put hooks in their nose and dragged them. The Ninevites were actually worshiping different Elohim, different, different gods, basically. They were worshiping Ishtar. They had different temples. They, had, um, they put their hearts in all these things and wars. They were warlike people. And they believed that their gods was above all gods. And this is what Jonah was facing. Jonah was facing the people that were wicked. And he was afraid. He was hesitant because Nineveh was the, the, he was, he was the enemy of Yah. Hallelujah. So this is what, this is what um, Jonah was facing, a terrible enemy, but he was not seeing what Yah wanted him to see. Let's go to Jonah chapter 3. Can somebody read Jonah chapter 3, verse 1 to 4? Sure, I will. And the word of Yahuwah came to Jonah a second time, saying, Arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I am speaking to you. And Jonah rose and went to Nineveh according to the word of Yahuwah. Now Nineveh was a great city before Elohim of three Yom journey or three days journey. And Jonah began to go into the city on the first day's walk, and he cried out and said, Yet forty Yomim and Nineveh say, uh, shall be overthrown, or four days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Hallelujah. And this was about uh, 760 BCE when that happened. And the men of Nineveh believed in Elohim and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest to the least of them. And the word reached the sovereign of Nineveh. So he arose from his throne and took off his robe and covered himself with sackcloth and satin ashes. And he proclaimed and said throughout Nineveh, 
by decree of the sovereign and his nobles, no man or beast, herd or flock shall taste whatever. Let them not eat, let them not even drink water, but let man and beasts be covered with sackcloth and call uh, mighty to Elohim and let each one turn from his evil way and from the violence that is in his hands. Who knows whether Elohim does turn and relent and shall turn away from the heart of his displeasure so that we do not perish. And Elohim saw their works that they turned from their evil way. And Elohim relented from the evil which he had said he would do to them, and he did not do it. Do you want to continue on the rest actually, of four? Actually, now, you can stop right there. I actually want you to stop at verse 4, but it's okay. I appreciate that, bro. Thank you. Do you have anything you see right there, Brother Rick? Well, for one, they listened because they understood what was coming upon them if they didn't turn. And even the, the king the sovereign of that area understood what was being proclaimed. And he even came from his throne and, and came down and did the same thing as the common people were to do because of the fear that he had of what was coming upon, upon them. And because of their obedience, Yahuwah relented and he said that he would have mercy upon them and not destroy them, not do the terrible things that he had planned or that he said he would do. That goes to show us if we will just listen. All he's really trying to do is get his people to hear and to repent, to turn away from their evil ways. This is the theme that we see throughout Scripture, and we're seeing it echoed here. So I think from what we can learn from this is that we need to humble ourselves and to when we hear or uh, that tug in our heart that we're in error. We need to, we need to turn and we need, um, do we understand what the sackcloth and ashes are? What that, does that represent? Do we know the meaning of those uh, to give us a clearer understanding of, of what it is that they were actually doing? But I haven't ever really looked into that in depth and, I think that would be something that's important here because I think it's a vital aspect of what they were doing. Yeah. I mean, sackcloth is basically like a loose cloth. It's a loose cloth used to be to show, basically, they would use that as mourning at the time. It was showing the signs of mourning and signs of repentance. So sackcloth, so the, the, um, the Ninevites were using that as a way of showing Yah that, you know what, we are, we are sorry, we're repenting for our wicked ways. So it was a sign of mourning. That is what sackcloth is about. Hallelujah. You, you mind if I add something to that, Kefa? Go ahead. Yeah, so the sackcloth also, you know, it, it, it symbolized them humbling themselves because instead of them putting on, you know, nice fancy garments and, and, and their regular wardrobe, you know, they come to a place of putting themselves to where they're wearing something that is really not of value or does not show wealth so it was really a way of humbling themselves to put on the sackcloth and then i believe the ashes um signify you know or sometimes they would uh certain scriptures talk about how they would you know use soil as well or the dirt uh, would signify that we are nothing you know um that we come from the ground we come from um nothing as well so just a, a sense of really humbling yourself down to you know really nothing and to come before yah as nothing you know um that we are nothing before him hallelujah so going back to going back to the beginning going back to the beginning when it came to jonah we understand the first time yahuwah called them to go to nineveh and he refused he refused yah humbled them he brought them back from the fish and then the second time he called them in chapter 3, verse 1. It says, And the word of Yah came unto Jonah the second time. And verse 1, Arise and go into Nineveh, that great city. Now you've got to understand something. Nineveh was a great city. The word, if Yah said it was a great city, it was a great city. Its population was over 100,000. It was about 60 miles wide. 
It was not a small city. It was a big city. So Ninevites and Ninevites are known throughout the world. They were known throughout the world. They put the name out there because of the things that they was, they was able to accomplish throughout the world. But yet, other nations fear. And Jonah was like, you know what? All right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go there. But at the same time, he listened to the voice. The first time he didn't listen to the voice of Yah. But the second time he did. So no matter what we do, we can put our feelings and emotions behind it. But no matter what we do, Yah's will will always be, Yah's will will always be accomplished no matter what. He always shows that when we go against it. So now when you go to verse 3, it says, So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of Yah. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days' journey. It's still showing you the expanse of Nineveh, Nineveh, a great city. And then in verse 4, Jonah began to enter into the city, his journey, a day's journey, and he cried and said, Yet 40 days, 40 days, that city should be overthrown. Now you see the heart right there of Jonah. He still was not getting what Yah was asking him to do. He gave the Ninevites 40 days to the, so the city will be overthrown. It, it, it reminds me of basically um, Noah. Remember when Noah was preaching um, to the people for 120 years? He gave them 120 years. Yah gave 40, these people 40 days to repent. But at the same time, Jonah was not willing to see the repentance of the city. You see, it is very important that we understand this in our hearts when it comes to compassion. We too were once wicked. We too were once lost. But Yah is showing us that he is Yah. This is the difference why Yah is Yah, because his ways is above our ways. And when it comes to us, we don't understand. But when we don't understand, Yah's way is always going to be accomplished. So the question we got to ask ourselves, are we listening to the voice of Yah when it comes to those outside of the camps? Those who are not of the covenant, are we listening to the voice of Yah when he's speaking to us the way, jo the way Yah spoke to Jonah? Do, are we responding to the Ruah when the Ruah is speaking to us? Go speak to that man. Go speak to that woman. Go. Or are we just ignoring or are we just running away from Yah's word? Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Mike, you got something to say, Mike? Yeah, I actually want to go uh, to ver uh, chapter two also. Um, Chapter two is is he's in the belly of the well and he's he's it's the the whole chapter is a prayer it's only ten verses but I'll start at uh I'll start at verse seven because the the first six verses he's um just talking about him being in the well then verse uh, verse seven says when my soul fainteth within me I remember thee Lord and my prayer came unto thee unto thine holy temple they that observe lying vanities forsake their own but I will sacrifice unto thee with my voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that, that, that I have vowed. Salvation is of Yahuwah. And, and Yahuwah spake unto the fish and vomited him out. So right here, I, I think it, it pretty much shows, besides, you know, including the fact that when y'all told him first to go there, he ran, you know, he ran away. Um, well, you know, why would he run? Uh, it seems like verse 9 tells us why. It says, but I will sacrifice unto thee the vo with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of Yahuwah. I believe that he ran, and this confirms it, is because he knew that Yah was bringing them salvation, which is why he was sending them. And as soon as he acknowledged that, that was the last thing he said, and Yah removed him from the belly of the well, because he understood the point of him going there was so that they may actually gain salvation. So I just wanted to point that out. Oh, yeah. That's a good point. That is a good point. That is true. I want to uh, ex uh, accentuate real quick on the ash cloth and, and sackcloth and ash real quick again, um, because I think there's a deeper meaning that we're missing here. For one, it's made, it's a black cloth that's made from goat's hair, and it's worn together with the burnt ashes, and it's a sign of mourning for personal or even national disaster. So I think that's why we see that the, even the sovereign or the king of this area came and joined them because there was some things that were already happening there. Uh, and and they're, they're, they're coming into a time of understanding what uh, Yonah is saying here, that 
you know, Yahuwah is your salvation, and you need to repent and turn away. And that's what sackcloth and ashes actually represents. It's a sign of repentance and, and, and a prayer for deliverance. So they're, they're going into this, and they're, they're actually mourning for the dead also that, that didn't hear or didn't turn. So there's a deeper revelation that we can receive from this that, you know, Yahuwah ain't playing. He, he gave this word to Jonah while he was in there, and Jonah got it. And that's why he allowed him to come out and to deliver this message of repentance because there was destruction coming, and they needed to turn and repent and return back to Yahuwah. Who is going to be their savior, basically? So, Crazy. Oh, I wanted to add, add to a, a Mecca's point too uh, about the sackcloth. Uh, and that's a good point, uh, Rick. Um, to add to a Mecca's point about about it, it being um, like a humbling thing, like you know they're doing it out of humbleness. Um, it's called. It's actually called sackcloth. I always thought it was sackcloth. It's sackcloth because it's actually the. It's actually a sack. It's it's a sack used to hold grain, so it's not even actually clothes. They're calling it sack cloth, but it's not cloth as in clothing. It's it's a sack. It's a it's a sack made to hold grain and, and food and stuff like that that they're wearing. So they're not even actually. It's not technically clothes. They're just wearing it. No, no. As if it were clothes. But it's still a cloth. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a cloth, but it's not clothing. It's not like a robe That's or a right. shirt. It's a sack. Hallelujah. It's kind of like, but the, the reason why it's called sackcloth is because it's made out of the same material that they use to make those, um, the sacks. It's made out of the same material. So they just call it sackcloth because it's like the cheapest clothing that you could basically get yeah. at the time. You know what I'm saying? So humbling, it huh? was kind of like a rope. But yeah, it's definitely humbling because it's like, look, we we are all, it's the whole nation acknowledging we are all on equal terms in the sight of Yah. We are all equal in the sight of Yahuwah. Um, none of us are greater than another. And so during this time, it's each, every, every individual coming to us the same standard of being, recognizing who we are in Yah, that none is greater than the other. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's, that's you know, so, a little bit more. Crazy yeah. Yeah, brother Mecca. Listen, point. So one thing we have to understand is that Yah, we, we, we all know that Yah sees beyond the flesh, he sees beyond the actions of a man, he sees the motives of the heart. So Yah knew and he understood that Nineveh was going to repent. But you see, as people, we struggle sometimes with seeing other people if if because we sometimes we forget that you know what we once came from the, that lifestyle of wickedness and sin and things like that. But a lot of times we truly, we sometimes forget that we came from that. And we always need to remind ourselves the compassion and the mercy and the love of Yahuwah. That Yahuwah is still working in people's lives at this moment. He's still calling us to show compassion to those outside of camp. So regardless if we don't see, Yahsi's beyond. So when he's speaking to us, we gotta listen. We gotta, our, our will has to be aligned according to this will. Because you see right now this king, this king basically, he's, he, he understood because I believe that Nineveh knew about the judgment of Yah. You see, Babylon was, was, was judged, all these people around was judged and whatever it is, but Nineveh, the king understood that Yah was, that he heard about Yah, he knew about Yah. He knew about Yah, you know, Yah's judgment. So when he saw, when he saw the opportunity of, of Jonah coming in, he listened. This is why it's important that when it's a king, the rulership, when, it's, when there's a rule on top, it's important that, that that man knows how important it is to rule a nation in a city. If there's a wicked man, it will affect the whole nation. But this man, this king, was able to humble himself and see Yah. And because of that, the whole nation, the whole city was able to change. That is an example when it comes to the book of Daniel. You already know about the book of Daniel when it came to Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar, because of Daniel's faith, because what he stood for, the whole nation was able to convert, was able to fear Yah. And this is why it's important that we constantly preaching, we're telling people, those who are lost, because one man, one woman can change the lives of a family, 
can change the life of a city, can change the life of a, of a nation. And this is a great example of how it's important that we remind ourselves to preach the word if the ruler is leading us to do it. Hallelujah. In Romans chapter 5, verse 10. Great. Can somebody go to Romans chapter 5, verse 10? For if we were enemies, if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to Yahuwah by the death of his son, how much more being reconciled, we shall, we shall be saved by his life. Hallelujah. So you see right there how we were enemies. Once we were enemies of Yahuwah, once we too were walking in wickedness, once we too were ignorant, once we too were walking in darkness. And that is the same example when it comes to those outside, though we need to be compassionate. The same way as compassionate, we need to be that same. We need to be the same because we too, we, we too came from that lifestyle. So we can't forget. We have to remember where we come from. We cannot be like, oh, this person is wicked and be like, you know what? Let it be destroyed. We cannot have that type of attitude. We got to remember where we come from. It is it's very key to understand that because Ephesians 6.10 talks about that, how the battle is not with flesh and blood, but of the spiritual war against the forces of evil in, dark, in high places. This is a spiritual warfare. This is a spiritual battle that's going on. It's not of the flesh. So we got to look beyond the flesh. As Yahuwah was looking beyond the flesh of the Ninevites, we also got to look beyond the flesh of, our, of, of the things that we see. We got to see what Yah sees. Because if we look at things of the flesh, we're not going to understand the things of the spirit. As Yah has shown, he's showing Jonah the example of his heart. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. You know, one, one thing I, I really uh, one one thing I really like about um, Jonah is that when you you know this uh, you know th this time is that when you look at Jonah, at first you know you see him run away from doing this mission, like you said, because he didn't want he wanted basically Nineveh to be destroyed because of their wickedness and. He ran away, and during that process, while he was on the ship, you know, um, he knew that this chaos was brought amongst the ship because of him. So when he had them cast him into the sea, when you look at that, it's almost a, a representation of him being immersed. Um, it's very similar to him being immersed and him being in the, in the belly of the whale for, for th you know, three days and three nights. Um, you see he's come to a place of humbleness and repentance to Yah, turning back to Yahuwah, turning back to, to him, uh, acknowledging, um, you know, Yahuwah is, you know, uh, uh, salvation is of Yahuwah. And so from that point on, you see after he's turned back to Yah, you see him turn back to obedience you know, to Yah and his word to go back to Nineveh. And it's kind of like the same cycle. We as individuals who go from wickedness to, um, it's like the process of repentance and, and reconciling with Yahuwah is that, you know, it's, it's almost a foreshadow of Mashiach and the immersion. You, you, once you're immersed, you turn back to Yah in obedience. And you can see once, once, uh, Yonah had gone to back to Nineveh, then he began to preach um, to save Nineveh from what happened, uh, uh, from, from their destruction. And he turned back into obedience, but then, you know, when you go into chapter four, you actually see that even though they turned back, he was still, Yonah still had- um, Right there, keep it there. We're gonna go to, we'll go to chapter four. Don't, don't let's, like, let's, let's keep it right there. We're gonna go to chapter four. We haven't finished uh, yet. But I want you to, you know, keep, you know, okay. keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Yeah, yeah. All right, sorry about that. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Verse 10, verse 10, all right? It says, and Elohim saw their works, that they turned from their evil ways, and Elohim repented of the evil, so that he said that he would not, he would do unto them, and he, and he did, and he did, and it not. So when you see right there that Yahuwah saw the works of the Ninevites, they believe, they have faith, and they repented. Urgently, they turned away from the evil ways. They believed. They were faithful. They saw, they saw signs of repentance. And they turned away from the evil ways. 
this is very important when it comes to understanding when a, in a matter of faith and turning away from our evil ways. We gotta show the Ninevites is, turn, is showing actions. They're being urgent, the king is being urgent. How are we urgent when it comes to ourselves, when it comes to our sins? These people were urgent. And these were outside, and those were people outside of the covenant. And it's to show you how Yah knows the hearts of every man. Just because you are outside of the covenant does not mean that Yah cannot see beyond what they're doing. This man, this king, this whole city, all of them turned to the point that even the animals, he caused the animals to fast from eating. That is very serious. That is like, wow, that's how urgent he was. He was like, you know what? I'm going to show my repentance. And that's how we need to be. We need to show repentance urgently. We cannot play the same way the scheme was. And that's why it's important that we constantly remind ourselves when it comes to repentance that we show our actions of repentance. We can't say we just repent and then not change, not do what we need to do. We got to show. Faith without these means nothing, as in the book of James talks about that. Hallelujah. We're going to move on to chapter 4. Jonah chapter 4. Can somebody read from verse 1 to 5? Uh, yeah, I'll read. Uh, verse 1, it said, But it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was very angry. And he prayed unto Eliyahuah and said, I pray you, O Yahuwah, was not this my saying when I was yet in my country? Therefore I fled before unto Tarshish, for I knew that you are a gracious El and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and repent of the evil. Therefore now, O Yahuwah, Take, I beseech you, uh, my, uh, take, I beseech you, my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. Then said Yahuwah, do you well to be angry? So Yonah went out of the city and sat on the east side of the city, and there made him a, su uh, a sukkah and sat under sat under it in the shadow till he might see what would happen, what would become of the city. Hallelujah. What's your thought, um, Brother Mecca? Um, I'm actually, I want, I want to hold up because there's, there's still something that's going to be brought out um, and, then, and then I'll give my thought on it. All right, no problem. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But definitely, uh, Yona is definitely still angry about the fact that Yah had uh, mercy on, on um, you know, on Nineveh. Yeah, for sure. And the thing is, you see, right now, you know, this is this is the beautiful thing about Yahuwah. And verse, and verse, um, verse, two, uh, verse two, it says, and he prayed unto Yah and said, I pray thee, O Yah, was not this my saying when I was set in my country? Therefore, I fled before unto Tarshish, for I knew that thou. A gracious El and merciful, slow to anger, and great in kindness, and repentance deep of evil. You see, Jonah knew the hearts of Yah. He knew his heart. He knew that Yah was going to show compassion. You see, we all know the different characters of Yahuwah. Yahuwah is loving, merciful. He's all the good things. But one thing I always remember that Yah, to me, that stands out more is that he's compassionate. That is who he is. He is compassionate. He is long-suffering to those who are outside, the strangers, those who are wicked, those who are in darkness. He's, he's, he's still looking for something to spark something in their hearts to change. He did it with us. So remind, always think about that. He did it with us. He was still patient with us. And because of that, it is why we're here in the camp right now. It is why we're in the covenant. So we cannot forget those who are outside of the covenant. Hallelujah. So, got then, you got something to say, Rick? Mike. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, I don't, <clears throat> you know, maybe it'll, it'll say more why later on in this chapter. But um, I find it interesting that uh, 
in verse five, it says that that he he sat, you know, and watched the city to to see what was gonna happen. Like, like why why is he sitting to see what's gonna happen? I mean, he apparently he already knows. So it's like, what's he just wasting his time for? It, it, or is that why he's actually sitting there? He thought he was. He, he, I think he wanted to see what was. I think he was waiting for something. I don't think he wanted. I don't think he wanted the city to be saved, number one. I th- yeah, I mean, he, sure probably he, wanted, he probably wanted a destruction. That's why he was uh-huh. speaking for 40 days. He was like, you know what, man, let me see, man, because I don't think these people are going to repent. You know what I'm saying? But he was, I think he was trying to see, like, you know what, let me see what's going to happen. Is it going to be a destruction, or is it going to be Yah's going to show compassion? But I think, I think Jonah didn't want that. I think he wanted yeah, he something. Did it, really. You know what I'm saying? Doesn't that show us the difference between us and Yahuwah? why that scripture says that his ways are so much higher than ours, you know, his thoughts are higher. He knows these things. I mean, you think about this. He, he's agreed to go and tell them to repent and turn away from their evil ways. And when they do, he's mad. He's like, man, I want these, you know, why is he mad? Why is he upset? Why is he, you know, I don't, I don't quite understand if he accepted this role to go and speak to them, which he did, to turn and, and return back and repent and all the things that, and when he sees him doing it, he's upset. Why? You know, what I see him doing is he's out there going and sitting and he goes away from there so he can watch them, hoping that they will fail, hoping that they will be destroyed or something, you know, kind of like, uh-huh. <laughs> you know, that's what I see here is like, and you want to say, well, are you right to be displeased? Why are you upset? You know, I mean, I'm here having mercy. I'm saving these four people, even the animals. They, and it goes back to the example of what it shows about what you said about the, the uh, fasting, you know, the sackcloth and ashes and the fasting. They were, even the animals they brought to a fast, you know. That says a whole lot about, you know, what they, they, they understood. They recognized and they listened to give up water and food to understand that that's part of our repentance, that's part of our our uh, purging, I guess, uh, of the sin, is that we, we need to go into that mode of denying ourselves so that we can hear what Yahuwah is saying. Because if it was up to a uh, man, they would have been destroyed, you know. And, it, and we're going to see this as it continues to go on. We can see Yonah's kind of bitterness, his is is he's like pouting, you know, and you who is still having mercy on him, even when he's in the middle of all that, as we're going to see later, uh, as we keep reading here, what he does for the guy, just even to give him comfort while he's in himself. You know, I, I just find it interesting. He, he's still, he's still got something in him. He's got to deal with within himself because we see that here that he's upset that you who is actually having mercy and patience with these people. You know? He's about to humble him. Jonah's about to be humble. He's trying to see the ways of the father. Like he says, no one knows the mind of her father, but yet he's about to see that the father, when he does something, he has a greater purpose. And uh, Jonah, like he said, in his heart and everything, he wanted to see uh, these people destroyed because they were some evil, wicked people, and they killed and murdered many people. Exactly. And that's why Jonah wanted to see their destruction. But the father says, you know, you know his ways are higher. He, he knows that they would repent and turn away from their ways and turn back to the truth and everything. He will spare them. And he wants to show Jonah this as well. You know, that's what it's about. It's not about Jonah's ways, but it's about the father's. He's looking, you know, it's about being, it's about seeing beyond. Thank you, thanks a lot, Tyrone. It's about seeing beyond our flesh. Seeing beyond what Yahweh is. As you were saying, Brother Rick, like his ways is higher than our ways. And we always have to think about that. Because if it wasn't, we would not be here at this moment. So it's very important to think about that. Um, in Luke chapter 6, verse 27, can someone go to Luke chapter 6, verse 27? It's for all to be able to participate as we do the study. Luke 6, 27. Let me know. Let's okay. see. Oh, I'm scrolling down here. Yeah. Um, but I say unto you, which hear, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you, bless them that curse you, 
and pray for them which despitefully use you. Um, what what verse 35. And unto him that smiteth thee on the one cheek, offer also the other. And him that taketh away thy cloak, for forbid not to take thy coat also. Give to every man that asketh of thee, and of him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not again. And as ye would... Is that 35, and, Brother Mike, Brian? What's that? This is, 30, well, this is their first 31 and one right now. Luke 6.35, Luke 6.35. Oh, just read 635? Okay. Yeah. Luke 635. Okay. But Be- love ye your enemies and do good. Hallelujah. And land hoping for nothing again, and your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. So what is your understanding about that, Brother Brian? Well, it's, it's interesting. It's like, it's, it's like, yeah, we were talking the other day and I was, I was, I was lately, I was just like in prayer and meditation and, and uh, just asking God, just like, just to give me that revelation of like, of what love is and like, and and like I I I've read about it and things I've read the Bible my most of my life and things and I've dealt with I have family members and relationships and 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 things like that but it's like I even in, in my own like when I look at my own life and look at people other other people's lives that I've dealt with and stuff it's like it's very rare to see the fruit of the ruach. And um, to know, like, in order to know what love is, you you first have to you have to repent and 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 turn and, and turn to Yah and and, and uh, really seek Him His wisdom to be filled with His wisdom to to walk in His love to be have that power to walk in His love and um, and I, I, that lately I've been talking to people who had who had had terrible terrible relationships and things and breakups and stuff like that. And, and, and uh, that's what lately I've been feeling led to tell, tell people who are, they, they have boyfriends and girlfriends and, and basically live promiscuous and things. And, and it's like, and it, it, it's like, you can't, you first have to seek you out. You have to repent and turn and, and, and act and have that love come into your life. Because you you can't you can't give something that you don't have, and that that person in your life can't re- reciprocate something that they don't they don't even have, and it's like the Bible says, "Seek ye first the kingdom of Yah, His righteousness, and all of the things shall be added unto you." And I was just thinking about that lately, and this verse just reminded me of that 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 we had to have the power of the ruach, we had to walk in that in the ruach to have the power to bear that fruit. Of, of love um to show that love I agree. I mean, we have to abide in that in that branch and and to bear that fruit and uh yeah so yeah that's a good point i appreciate that man it's, it's very important that we have we're walking in the rule and the fruit of the spirit to be able to understand the works of yah and how he functions so if we're walking according to the rule we're walking according to the spirit the fruit of the spirit then we are connecting ourselves with the with the image of yahuwah because he's beyond that He's beyond what we see. So you see right now, loving your enemies does not mean, does not mean that basically you sit down and, 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 and just, you know, do the wicked things that they do together. It doesn't mean that. It's just, okay, he's wicked, but you, it's, it's actually telling you that it's, it's about showing respect. It's about praying for those who are, who are in the lost, who are in darkness. It doesn't mean that you are mingling with their sins. They're just showing that you pray for them. You show compassion. Um, you look at them in a sense of like, man, I want them to know who Yah is. I want them to know, I want them to receive what I know with my relationship with Yahuwah. It's having a feeling of compassion within yourself to be like, man, this is what they're missing. I want them to experience 
what we have and the covenant that we have. It's not looking down at them and be like, you know what, they're wicked. Nah, man, I don't want to, you know, nah, he's that, man. It's, it would be hard for me to share with that person because of what he's doing. They're just looking at them with remorse, with compassion, sympathy, <clears throat> because we too came that, you know, we too came from that. So I was convicted by that a while ago. And I was like, wow, you know what? I need to repent from that. So this is why I wanted to make this as a message because a lot of times we forget, we lose that. We could become inwardly focused as Jonah was. He was inwardly focused. He was justifying his work, his emotions, his feelings about the Ninevites are wicked. This is what they did to my people. And he was justifying that, but not seeing beyond what Yah wanted to see. Hallelujah. Oh, and uh, Kepha, it's interesting you, you mentioned the, the repentance. They were showing the fruit of repentance because there's people, uh, I'm sure the, you, you all who, who evangelize a lot, after a while, you can discern the spirit of repentance. It's like some people, some people you have, you, you feel their heart, they're, 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 they have that sorrow and their, their heart is ready to receive the, what your word you're saying. And then some people you could instantly tell that it's like, a, you're, it's like you hit a brick wall where you, they, they're not, they're at, not at that place in their life yet. At that broken, that broken and contrite spirit, and it's interesting. But John the Baptist, he, when he was baptizing, uh, he said, he said um, to the multitude, he said that came forth to be baptized of him. He said, "Oh, generation of vipers, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth, therefore, fruits worthy of repentance, and begin not to say within yourself." that we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that Yah is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And so, yeah, John, the Yochanan, the immerser, he had that discernment, like who was really had a broken and a contrite spirit yes. and, who, and who was just going through the, through the motions. And that's like that discernment that, as you go out and, 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 and evangelize that, I think that, that, that develops over a period of time. You had that discernment to know not who, who to go to and, not, and, and who not to. It's like the, the scripture says, don't cast your pearl before the swine. Hallelujah. Appreciate Thank you that, for this, Brother Kepha. Uh, this uh, verse right here really resonates with me right now, with what me and my wife are going through. We have some things going on and this verse is very key. Like you said, I need to humble myself before my father because when you're being done wrong and people have hurt you and so forth and you see them prosper in their ways and so forth, but you know the truth and you try to walk in that truth. And uh, it's hard to try to bless your enemies, but that was the first thing that uh, came to me and my wife's you know, uh, heart and mind is that you know, I said pray for them. Pray that they see the truth exactly. and let the father deal with them. You continue to walk in his ways and not in our own thoughts and our own thinking, because it can lead us astray from our father. If we continue to harbor such, you know, uh, I wouldn't say hate, but frustration and anger towards them and everything. But uh, this is very key. I want to share this with her later. Thank, Thank you for you, that. That is wonderful, man. That is great news, man. This is exactly what it's about. We got to feel the compassion. We got to feel the compassion. And it was burning in my heart. It was burning in my spirit the way I conducted myself. It convicted me. We got to have compassion. Remember, saints, remember Israel. Remember where we came from. Remember. Let us walk humbly. Let us not be self-righteous, religious. Let us understand the heart of Yah. This is what we need to see. We need to look at the way Yahusha was when it came to others. You see, people talk about, even, it's, it's funny how, you know, when you look at the hearts of Yah, and then when it comes to the New Testament, people think it's two different things. Yah is still the same. He hasn't changed. He still has shown compassion in so-called, you know, in the Old Testament. He still has shown compassion. That same compassion when he sent his salvation, Yahusha, was sown that same spirit, that same ruah, that same fruit of the spirit, in the same way. Yah never changes. As I mentioned in Hebrew chapter 13 and Malachi chapter 2, Yah is still the same, present, past, and future. And we always need to think about that. Compassion, compassion. Blessed are the mercy, for they shall be shown mercy. 
this is what we have to do. We cannot have the heart that we don't care. We cannot have the heart that those the wicked are just wicked and we can just gotta forget them and just not pray for them. We too, people were praying for us too. I believe that we all in this journey because people was praying for us in some ways. Each one of us, somebody was praying for you. Whether it's your mother or your father or somebody, somebody was praying for you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Um, Kef also, and I mean, you really just spoke on, you know, what's, what's concealed in Torah, um, what's written in the Torah. You know, it says in, in Leviticus 19, uh, verse 17, it says, you shall not hate your brother in your heart. You shall in any wise rebuke your neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. You know, and when you read Proverbs 27, uh, verse five, it says, open rebuke is better than secret love. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but kisses of an enemy are deceitful. So it's like, you know, that's exactly what Yah is looking for from us. Like, yo, love is to correct. It is to rebuke your neighbor. It is to rebuke those that are in wrongdoings, your enemy, you know, um, that is love, showing them love, you know, so loving your enemy is rebuking your enemy and letting them know, hey, bro, you're in the wrong. And you need to correct yourself before you hua. And you need to turn back to you, you know, so. Oh, yeah. And there's also wisdom behind that too. Y'all also call us to be wise too, when we are reaching out to those. Y'all showing us too that there's people that do want to repent, and there's also people that don't want to repent. You get what I'm saying? So if you're, if you're showing us, if you're showing people about Yahushua, and you're showing people about the Torah, the commandments of certain things, or whatever it is, and if they're not listening, you know what I'm saying? You know, you got to keep moving, you pray for them, but you don't want to constantly, like, throw it in their face if they don't want to hear it. And the difference is that the, Nev the Ninevites, they wanted to hear. Even though they were ignorant to the laws of Yahuwah, they wanted to hear. They heard the message and they took it and they repented. So that's very key to understand. We still got to use wisdom. We can't be knocking people over the head boop, with the Torah and be like, we better repent because the Torah says so. And we got we to gotta give it to the hands of Yah. Hallelujah. Yeah, there's a couple of examples here that we need to look at real quick. Two Kephas. He's not only dealing with the Ninevites, he's dealing with uh, uh, Yonah. And he had to humble Yonah. He had to seclude Yonah from everything else. He had to, to remove him and take him to a secluded place to deal with him and to get him to see. But the other thing we need to recognize is he, he had to prepare the Ninevites, and it wasn't, it wasn't Jonah doing this on his own. It was because Yahuwah led him and directed him. He prepared the way before him. Jonah wasn't doing it in himself. He didn't even want to do it. You know, he, he wanted to he wanted to see these people punished for what they've done, just like Brother Tyrone said. You know, that's an example that we need to take from this is that people are going to do us wrong. You know, same thing I'm dealing with. Uh, I've had somebody do me wrong recently, and it's been it's it's been a lesson that's been dealing with me because I want some in some ways I want to get uh, I don't want to say revenge, but I want to I want justice to be done. Um. So I'm dealing with, do I let it go? Keep praying for him? Do I confront that person, you know, and, and, and bring uh, the, you know, the law enforcement police and to get them involved? Uh, uh, you know, what do you do in that kind of situation? And I'm seeing here, which I'm thankful that you brought this message this morning, because it's making me have to look at myself inside and how am I going to handle this situation, even according to what I'm seeing here. I'm still like I'm still like he Jonah sitting out underneath, the, uh, away from there, trying to figure out. I want to see how they're going to be destroyed. I don't think they're going to do it. But the thing is, is Yahuwah is the one that sent him. Yahuwah prepared the way. He didn't do it on his own. Exactly. He's gonna. He's learning a very valuable lesson here, and it, and it, and it's something we need to get that lesson inside of us too. Now I agree with that, but I strongly, I strongly agree that the lesson is also for Jonah. Not only for Jonah, for each one of us, all of us. This is why the word is the word. This is why Yah gave us this word so that we can be able to learn from these examples and to know who Yah is. 
I mean, I can understand where Jonah is coming from as a human being. I can understand that. These people were like, man, they were wicked to my, to my people. They, they, I mean, the, I mean, the Nineveh, the Assyrians, man, if you, I mean, historically, man, I was, I didn't want to share these things, man, but they did a lot of crazy things. Cutting people's limbs and, and I mean, burning people and, I mean, I mean, babies and, I mean, these people were wicked. So just imagine the heart of Jonah, you know what I'm saying? That's the human part of it. That's the physical human part of, of us wanting vengeance and, and this and, you know what I'm saying? But we all know that vengeance, as the word said, vengeance is for Yahuwah. Yahuwah is calling us that he's saying that, you know what, I do those things. I take vengeance. I take care of that. We know that, but it's hard within ourselves to deal exactly. with it. <laughs> no, no, I agree. It's hard. So, I mean, that's, that's the, I understand. I understand. It, it's, it's difficult. That's the, and this is why Yah is Yah. But Yah still was fulfilling his will, regardless of how we feel and our emotions and our feelings. He's still going to get it done, regardless. But he understood. Like, you understand? Hallelujah. Um, the, the exact example that, that we even have here in Jonah, the, the example of what mercy looks like or what compassion looks like. And, and this example what we have is telling people to repent. And this example, the, 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 the example of mercy and compassion is telling sinners, I think Emeka was saying that, is it telling them to repent, bringing them to repentance. Yeah. That's, that's what mercy and compassion looks like. Not wanting them to stay in their sin, not wanting them to, to get the wrath that's going to come. Doesn't matter what they've done to you, which, yeah, yeah, of course, you know, easier said than done. I mean, we can sit there and judge, judge Jonah for sitting over there, but I just told my wife, like, with the stuff you just said, kept it like, what if someone did that to my kids? And then y'all told me to go, to go, uh, you know, uh, tell them to repent so that they can be saved. I'll be like, excuse me? You know, like, I would be Jonah on that hill. <laughs> For real, you know, I, I can sit here justify, and I'm sure to all of us, we're like, well, yeah, he has a point, but like, no, I don't. Like, it doesn't matter. That's not mercy. Y'all have mercy on me regardless. What are, whenever we're doing our sins, what are we doing to Yahusha? Right? It's like we're trampling on his blood. We're partaking in what they did to his son. So just because somebody does something to my son, I have the right now to sit back. Like, no, y'all didn't sit back and say, no, you're going to get judged. You're going to get punished. No, he forgave. He forgave us for what we did. So we should therefore want him to forgive others as well. Love your neighbor as yourself. Very hard, right? Yeah. Very hard. It's extremely, it's not, it's definitely not easy to see that. That's, it's like that spiritual like you mentioned earlier, Kefa, that, that spiritual warfare that's going on in the background. Um, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but the, it's the principalities and powers and rulers of darkness. It's, it's like there's a spirit when people are not, when people are not, like even our own lives, like that, that wronged us, when people are not under the influence of the Ruach and they're not being led and they're not, they're not allowing their lives to be governed by his, the, the word of Yah. They are, we are, we are capable, even, even once we're born again, uh, we are capable, if we're not, if we're not constantly being led through, through the Ruach and, and submitting ourselves, we are capable of anything. And we see example after example in scripture of powerful men of Yah, like uh, David and um, uh, Shaul, and things like it's when we're not it, it, David, for example, was a man of Yah's own heart, and he had someone he he had laid with another man's wife and had him killed. Uh, and then, but you see the fruit of repentance later on, where he he, he cries out, "Yah, take not your your ruach from me." Um, uh, and things. Well, we also see other examples like Shaul before he he had his his conversion. Um, going about killing and, and, and things like that and thinking that he was doing the will of Yah, but it was just, he was in, he was under, uh, under the influence of another, uh, another spirit and just seeing, seeing that, that spiritual component in there. And it's, it's interesting. Like I've read over this, um, numerous time, um, uh, in, uh, in Matthew 16, um, there's a situation where Peter rebukes Yahusha when Yahusha tells him that he's going to be killed. Um, 
and raised again on the third day. Peter, it says in Matthew 16, 22, then Peter took him, uh, Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from you, Lord, that this shall not be unto you. But Yahushua, but he turned and said unto him, Get get thee behind me, Satan, thou art an offense unto me, for thou savest not the things of Yah, but those uh that be a man. And it's interesting that I've read over I've just like read over this. I remember reading over this so many times when not really seeing the revelation of what Yahushua what Yahushua saw. It is like he addressed that that instead of a rebuke, instead of rebuking Peter personally, he rebuked he rebuked that spirit that was in the background that that what was uh, influencing Peter to see that he he saw through the flesh of Peter and saw what was going on in the spiritual realm, and and having that that discernment is like so key, and it's not it's not easy. It's 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 like we've all dealt have relationships and things and family or friends or anything like that, that that we've been wrong and it's so it's so easy just to focus on them as a person and, and to see that have that discernment is is so is so valuable to um um uh, to to show that love and to direct our energy our energy uh, direct your your righteous anger toward that that spirit that's behind that. Um, yeah. and so yeah, well, praise yeah, brother. Thanks for sharing, brother Brian. I appreciate that. I think you're right. Um, you definitely need to uh, be mindful of that. Um, let's move on from um, we in our verse, verse six, right? Of Jonah four. Yeah, Jonah four. Can somebody? Yeah, I can read. read I can read that. Yeah, finish it off. And Yahuwah Elohim appointed a plant and made it come up over Jonah to be a shade for his head, to deliver him from his discomfort. And Yona greatly rejoiced over the plant. But as morning dawned the day, the next day, Elohim appointed a worm, which struck the plant so that it withered. And it came to be, when the sun came up, that Elohim appointed a scorching east wind. And the sun struck on Yona's head so that he grew faint and asked for his life to die. And said, it is better for me to die than to live. And Elohim said to Yona, have you rightly become displeased over the plant? And he said, I have rightly become displeased, even to death. And Yahuwah said, you felt sorry for the plant for which you have not labored, nor made it grow, which came up in a night and perished in a night. And should I not pardon Nineveh, that great city in which, you are, in which more than 120,000 beings who have not known their right hand from their left and much cattle? Hallelujah. Brother Nate, what is that telling you? What are you, what are you getting from that? Well, Yahuwah, he, uh, he likes to speak in, in metaphor. He likes to, um, I think a lot of times, this is kind of something that I've, I've been learning as a, uh, to, to uh, uh, cultivate this understanding, you know, um, is uh, uh, he things are planned out ahead, you know, Yahuwah knows what's going to happen, and so things, you know, uh, um, I, I don't believe in you know coincidences, uh, on, on, on thir certain things like that, you know, that, that Yah uses things to uh, uh, for teaching lessons, you know, and I, I see I see the plant representing uh, Nineveh that it grows in a day and in, in, in a night and dies in a night, you know, in, in a way, um, I see that, uh, um, you know, um, that, that like he was, he was at first in the first chat, you know, first part of chapter four, you know, he, he, again, you know, he pleads for his, his life to be taken from him. Um, you know, and they're, and they're talking about the compassion in, you know, verse two, um, you know, that he's, that he's, that he shows, you know, favor and compassionate, patient and great loving commitment and relenting from doing evil. And, uh, and then, and then we see in the second half, you see, um, you know, uh, uh, a plant, you know, you know, growing up and then a worm and then it withering and dying. And, you know, man is as a blade of grass, as we know, in the scripture, uh, withers and dies that this city is kind of like, kind of like a, a withering blade of grass, you know what I mean? And, and, uh, you know, Jonah didn't work for the city and the city was kind of, um, 
you know, uh, uh, had grown up and, uh, um, and, and essentially was without that worm and, uh, um, and, and, you know, had life, but then when, you know, like, like wickedness or like the worm infected it and then it grew and died. And I see it kind of like being a metaphor. Like he was, he was, you know, uh, um, uh, depressed that, uh, uh, that the city wasn't destroyed and, um, and, and, uh, it, it was because it was still providing shade essentially, you know, but then when the city became infected, you know, after, you know, as we know later on in it was destroyed that it, uh, um, uh, was then, was then destroyed. I see kind of like a, a similarity between like a, like a, a type there, you know? Um, but, uh, again, it all, it all comes back to, to being, uh, um, um, being repentant, you know, um, in, in being compassionate on, on the wickedness that, uh, that is being done and that we were not to be told to, to, uh, um, to rejoice in, in the destruction of others. I believe I'm trying to remember where that is. I believe it's in Jeremiah about, uh, when, when, when Israel was, uh, attacked and, uh, and carried off that, uh, the Moabites, the Edomites and the, the Ammonites were, were rejoicing over that happening. And then Yahuwah, you know, essentially was like, Oh, so you're, you're happy about that. Well, now they're going to come and get you too, you know? So, um, um, like one last thing, you know, I, when, when Notre Dame uh, caught fire, um, I don't know, remember if you guys remember when Notre Dame caught fire, like a few months ago, I was over at a brother's house and, uh, um, and when I saw the fire burning, I, I saw, I, I felt like, um, like some, some warning. I felt like a warning who it was giving, uh, um, you know, like no one was died, no one, no one died, but there was a warning. And, and like, I felt this remorse because I, I felt like the, the warning that was coming and, um, uh, this other person was like, like dancing around and hooting and hollering over like the destruction of, of, uh, of, you know, the, the Roman Catholic church is coming down as a warning. And I, I, I just, you know, one thing that I, I would really say is that, you know, when we see these warning signs or we see, uh, uh people doing wickedness and we see Yah sending messengers to help them repent, you know, or, or, or signs that, that things are about to collapse is that it's, it should be a time of, a time of sorrow because we should really hope, uh, that, uh, that everyone, uh, that is to get out, uh, gets out that, uh, that is ready for repentance and really to call people to repentance, um, to come into, uh, um, you know, the, uh, salvation. Hallelujah. Wow. Said a lot right there, brother Nate. I appreciate it. Um, I like the example that you mentioned about the, the plant, um, connecting it with the people of uh, Nineveh, right? Um, I also think, you know, when I think about um, Jonah, we all know Jonah was displeased. He was annoyed by the mercy of Yah. Um, to know that he wanted to die, to know that he wanted to die because of, of what Yah has done to Nineveh, that, that's, that's really deep. That's really deep. I think about Job. I think when Job was going through a situation, you know what I'm saying, he also wanted to die, you know what I'm saying, because of, of, of the things that he was struggling with, with the hardships and things like that. He, I guess it gets to a point of time when people go to those lowest points that they just want to give up in their lives. And, um, and to know that Jonah and even Job, um, they were not seeing um, that they gave, they was like, you know what, I'm done. You take my life. That's a, that's a very hard thing, very hard thing. Um, so um, I look at what you just said, Brother Nate, um, the Ninevites, you know, Yah knew that the Ninevites was going to repent. So he became, because of the repentance, Yah became a covering to the, to the city, to the nation of Nineveh. We all know that Yah provides, and he uses many parables when it comes to things of the land, the parable of the seeds and um, vineyards and all these things. And to know that Yah is our protector. He was protecting Ninevite because of the repentance. He, he poured the rule upon them and the love upon them because they was able to receive. He was, they was able to be watered by, by his love, by his compassion, and he covered them. Um, and I believe that's how Yah is going to be with the rest of the nations. But those who are, those who are going to repent, though, even for the people, those who are going to repent, he's going to, uh, he's going to, not, he's going to allow himself to be, 
his ruah, his presence, to cover them, to protect them um, in the time of judgment and destruction. Um, and this is why we're so blessed to have the blood of Yahusha, because of our faith and our trust in him. We are covered by his presence. We are covered by the blood. And this is why it's so important that we constantly grow in the ruah and the mercy of Yah, because he will have mercy. For, he will be merciful for those that are merciful. He will be merciful for those who are trying to be like him, who are trying to walk in the light, and he will cover us with a shadow of his wings. Hallelujah. No, I'm seeing here. Yeah, brother, brother, yeah, brother. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, brother. What I'm seeing here is some of this. This it's pretty amazing to me, honestly. He Yahuwah uses the the simplest things to make his points be understood. You know, he appoints this plant. He appointed it for a purpose. You know, he he made that plant. Uh, grow for that moment to bring a little bit of a lesson to Yonah, to give him a little bit of comfort from the heat. But uh, but then, what does he do? He, he also sends this uh, this insect, this bug, uh, to go ahead and, and basically devour the plant, make it wither, to kill it, so that he has to uh, bring Jonah to a realization about this whole situation. And it brings Jonah to a place where, again, I see a, a selfishness on, uh, dealing with him. There's some kind of like, I don't know how to describe it with him, where he wants to surrender his life. He wants to die over something like this to the point where Yahuwah is like, look, I've, I've done this to, to illustrate a point to you. You have you have compassion over or uh, concern or or whatever it is a displeasure over the loss of this plant this leaf that I created for, to give you comfort, but you can't even have compassion over the people that I've created, you know even the animals, because the destruction was coming upon them. But he's so concerned about himself because this something had to do with him, this plant giving him comfort and shelter. Yahuwah takes that away and allows this heat to come upon him to make him so miserable, to, to give him an example so profound that he will look at it from a different perspective that Yahuwah is trying to save these people and the animals. And you want to give up your life because you're miserable, because you didn't get your way, because things didn't work out how you thought they should, you know? I mean, think about that, that example there. I mean, that's powerful example and just a, a, a metaphor of a plant and, a, and an insect that, that removes that. How Yahuwah can use every little aspect of his creation to accomplish his purpose and his goal. Praise Yah, brother. That is a great example. This is why, this is why Yah is so great. That's why, you know, he understands the, the, the nature of a man. He understands that we're still flesh. So whatever he does, he always try to find ways to give us an open door to understand what he's trying to do, like what you just said, Brother Rick. Yah was like, I'm trying to show you something. We smacking the top of your head right now, man. I'm trying to show you what I want you to see, all right? I'm trying to show you that life is more precious than, than the plant that you want to be covered or the shadow of the tree or whatever it is. I'm trying to show you that you're more valuable. Life is more valuable. Blood is more valuable than anything. Life is more valuable than everything. I take care of the plants, I take care of the birds, and I do all of that. But you, man, I created you. You're more valuable. I want you to know who I am. Regardless of your status, regardless of you being in sin, I'm going to try to smack you in the back of the head to, to realize that, listen, I got something greater for you. And that's why we are where we are right now. And that's what the most I was trying to show Jonah. You know, come on, get it. Come on, bro. There's other people out there, man. Come on. Wake up. It's not about you. It's about me. My glory amongst the Gentiles. It's not about you. I give glory. I give, I give, I show you things. I make things grow. I'm getting all excited right now. You know what I'm saying? My wife is saying I'm getting all excited right now. You know, it's like I give the I give the glory. I show man what it is. You just the vessel, you just the instrument. And that's the beauty of Yah. So regardless of what we do, 
Yah is the one that make things grow. We're just the vessel. And if we don't get it, he's still going to make things happen, regardless. Isn't it interesting how he ends this with a question mark? I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> make us think about all that we just read? Question. That's right. Good point. And in verse 11, I think Mecca wanted to say something. Go ahead, Mecca. Yeah, um, I I have a you know a, a slightly different uh, look on um, the the symbolism of of the plant. Um, you know, we have to when you look at Yona's purpose, right? <clears throat> Yah has sent Yona with the purpose to bring Nineveh to repentance, and in you know, and in another turn to be to be a covering for Nineveh, right? And um, he didn't, now Yah didn't do the labor. Yona did the labor. And so when you look at the symbol, symbolism of this plant, Yah had created um, this plant to give Yona covering to bring, to, to cool him, and, you know, and it brought him comfort. It brought him, you know, the comfort in the place that he was, same way Yonah had brought comfort to Nineveh, knowing that when they returned to Yah, this destruction would have come upon them. So this plant, to me, is a symbol of Yonah actually actually being a covering for Nineveh, and how now that Yonah, after he's done his job and his duty, is now asking Yahuwah to, to, to take his life, when you look at it, <laughs> he said, you know, when Jonas uh, sees this this plant that has given him shade die and wither away because of this moment, it's like Yah is, and, and he's having compassion on it. You know, he's having compassion and now asking to be, you know, to die. It's like Yah saying, like, look, you are having compassion on this plant that you did no work to build. You know what I'm saying? Now, Almost like, now, don't you think I'm going to have compassion on you who labored and I didn't do the work? Like, why would I take your life, the one who was able to give covering to this place? You know, the way you're having compassion on this plant is the way I'm going to have compassion on you. Um, I don't want you to cease. I don't want you to die because you did your, you did your duty. You did your due diligence to go out and preach the repentance, to preach what I was, you know, commanding you and, 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 and telling you to preach. So I definitely see this plant kind of as a, a, a symbolism of, of Yona and Yona being a symbol of, of, of uh, Nineveh, you know, in that Nineveh didn't know right from wrong. The same way Yona is looking at um, this repentance that has now happened and he's saying he wished the, destroyed, the city was destroyed and how, how Yona didn't know what, what, what good from bad was. Because if you know good from bad, you know it was a good thing that Nineveh came to repentance to Yah. You know? And so, in a sense, he didn't know his left, right from his, hand, from, uh, his left hand from his right hand. He didn't know that it was a much better thing for, for Nineveh to repent, you know, and come back to Yahuwah than for them to be, you know, destroyed for their wickedness. Wow. Praise Yah, bro. It's a lot, man. I think it's a very good point. Um, when you mentioned verse 11, I mean, verse 11, I'm going to read it again. And I should not, and should I not spare Nineveh, that great city? I'm always going back to that great city. It's like, it must be a great, a really big city. Well, we're all more than six fours thousand, which is about 120,000 that cannot discern between your right hand and your left hand. Right, so, and then it says, and also much cattle. Now, this is a good, this right here is really good because there's many people out here that we are going through in life that does not know right from wrong. They live a lifestyle, they don't know the Torah, even though they might know right from wrong, but they don't understand, according to the instruction of Yah, they don't know the law. They don't, they're ignorant as the way the Ninevites were ignorant to the laws of Yahuwah. Because we all know that the Torah is the standard from knowing right from wrong. So to the world, they might have a view of what's right from wrong. But according to the Torah, 
there's a scandal between right and wrong, right? So now we look at that. Yah is remorseful. He's, you know, he's remorseful. He wants people to repent uh, because we too understand that because we too were ignorant of the law. We too were ignorant of, of this understanding. So you can feel the passion. You can feel the understanding. This is why we got to connect ourselves to the word, to the scripture, because it's directly speaking to us. It's telling us how compassionate Yah is, how he deliver us. And there's a Hebrew idiom that talks about that when it comes to uh, little children who need Yahweh's fatherly compassion, right? We all have children. Some of us have children and we understand like, wow, you know, this is my blood. This is my children. So even though when they do wrong, they don't know the right from wrong, we got to guide them. We got to instruct them. We got to show them what is, the, what is the word? What is the Torah saying? The same way, yeah, it's like that when it comes to people and other nations. So that's why being a parent is very is, is good because it's like showing you us that, wow, you know what? The compassion that we need to have to our children is the way that Yah is when it comes to us as a people who has brought us. He has guided us. He, he pulled out his hand and he went, come on, I, I'm going to guide you to this understanding. I'm going to guide you to my covenant, to my people, to my nation, Israel. As Yah did when it came to the Israelites and removed them out of Egypt. He brought them out of the eagle's wings. And that's why we have to be grateful. That's why we have to take this in. Take this in and understand the long suffering and the compassion of Yahuwah. How has literally got us like a father to a child. Let us remember the compassion. Let us remember that Yah is still calling other people out there, even till now, to come to bring into the covenant. To guide those into the covenant of Yah. We still got a lot. We still got work to do. You see, the, the book of Jonah, the book of Jonah, it shows God's mercy and the impartiality, not only to the children of Abraham, but to all mankind. In this way, Nineveh is an example of what Yah will do in the New Testament, right? In the grafted in of the Gentiles. We look at it in the book of Romans chapter 11 and Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. The book of Jonah is an example of the grafted in of those outside to be a part of his covenant, a part of his people. And that's why many of us are in this covenant, because he grafted us back in as a people. And now we are Yah's people. And now we gotta bring people back into this understanding by Yah's rule and by Yah's spirit. Hallelujah. Anybody have um, any last saying? Anyone about to share anything? Yeah, that was, that was, that's, you took the words right out of my mouth, how you, how you brought that all together, Kefa, like, the, it, it reminded me of the new, of the uh, Brit Hadashah, how, like, it's, it's ironic how you see, it's, it's ironic when Israel, looking at the, reading through the, 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 uh, the scriptures and things, they were, they were, y'all create, y'all wanted them to be a kingdom of, of priests, and, um, to be a light unto the nations, and 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 when I look at it, it's like when they were uh, uh, when they were one, when they were a nation. Um, when Solomon was reigning, there was peace there, under his reign. There was peace uh, on it was peace in the land, and they never they didn't go to war. And you had the kings, the nations uh, coming to him from all over uh to to learn of to glean from the wisdom that Yah blessed him with and and um but after that it went yeah it went downhill quickly but when you, it's it's ironic that it, it looks like like it's, it appears to me is like when Israel's in captivity they were Yah used men like Jonah men like Dan, Daniel um and and others like Jeremiah uh, Ezekiel, they were in in the land of their captivity. They were Yah had men that that is like Israel. These these men were like more of a light in in, uh, in captivity than Israel was when they were a nation. And you see how Yah used these men uh, in 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 the captivity. And it's like what we see in um in the in the New Testament. We see like Kepha. Um, Kepha gets that vision of the the clean and unclean animals, and and he didn't want to. He had he felt some kind of way about the 
the heathens and things that oh those are the heathens and but yeah he corrected him and it's like don't call things that I have made clean unclean and 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 so yeah you see that principle that that same principle that Yah's the same yesterday today and forever that there's no more Jew there's no more Greek there's no more male there's no more female but we are all one in Yahusha it's just like you see that throughout throughout scripture it's just it's just a uh, it's, it's y'all is so consistent and so man yeah. ain't that beautiful yeah ain't that beautiful ain't that wonderful amen you know, I mean. know that yah was thinking about those outside of the camp those that people don't think about and yahusha is a great example of that y'all always like you said brother brian he's he's consistent I hear people talk about there's only Israel shall be saved. Only the Israelite or the bloodline. And no, it's, it's false from the truth. Yah is grafting in people from other nations. And it's going to be a beautiful thing because Yah is colorful. Yah is he's, he's, he's so wide. His, his, his love is so wide and <coughs> that many of us can't comprehend. We think we know we understand the love of Yahuwah. But do we really do understand the love of Yahuwah? I'm still really trying to understand. Yahuwah love is vast. You just understand, and this is why it's so beautiful to see people of different faces, different colors and language and culture. Man, that's beautiful. This is why we know, I know we know, we know each other, Mecca and, and Brian and, and Mike and all the people that I hear, Brother Rick. This is why we, this is why we, we, we have this because of Yahusha, who brought us all people of all colors and, you know, race and all this. This is, this is beautiful. And this is exactly what's going to be in the Shammah in the New Jerusalem. Yeah. This is beautiful. This is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And I think that we always got to remind ourselves. We got to look beyond the flesh. We got to see beyond what we see with our own eyes, but see what Yah is telling us in the war, in the spirit. That is the communication place. This is the place that he wants us to connect. Through the Ruah, this is where we're going to understand the mind and heart of Yahuwah by the Holy Ruah, the Ruah Akodesh, the fruit of the Spirit. If anything outside of that is not of Yahuwah, we got to walk in the Spirit and listen to what the Ruah is telling us inside of, of thinking about what we think is best before Yahuwah. Proverbs chapter 3 talks about do not lean on our own understanding. You understand? So this is why we have to always remind ourselves, am I thinking about my own thoughts and my own flesh? Or am I thinking about what I would do? What would y'all do in this situation? This is why we got to be thinking. What would Yahushua do in this situation? Hallelujah. So this is the message that we, that I wanted to bring forth about thinking about those outside of camp and even those inside of camp to be compassionate and to be merciful. Let us pray. Abba Father, we thank you. In the name of Yahusha, thank you for your compassion and your mercy for bringing us out of darkness from the ways of our wicked ways, Father. It is you, Father, that gave man discernment and understanding, Father. It is you, Father, you are to guide us to your truth and not our ways, not our flesh. But we know that the corner is weak. But your ways, Father, through the Ruah is power. And let us walk in that authority, Father, that you have given us through your Son. Father, we are your children. We are your servants. We are your saints. Continue to humble us and give us understanding of things that we really don't get. We know that we love you. We have that idea that we know that we love you. But help us to comprehend more and more and more the love and the compassion that you have given us when we once were in darkness, when we once did not know right from wrong. Thank you, Father, for the example that you gave us to Jonah and the Ninevites to be repentant and to change, to show our actions and our deeds so that we can come to your covenant. In the name of Yahushua, we thank you, Father. Bless our homes, bless our families, bless our children. Bless us, Father, and let us walk in shalom and you forgive us for our transgressions, Father. So we may have sin without knowing, Father. The knowing sins or the unknowing things, the things that we have done, we bring it before you, and we ask for your mercy <coughs> and your forgiveness. Thank you for our families. Thank you so much, Father. 
allowing us to be a part of this covenant through the blood of Yahushua. In Yahushua's name, hallelujah.